Hello there, welcome back to the garage. Today's project is replacing the factory KLR enricher valve system or the choke system with a hand operated one uh, like you see here. The reason I'm doing that is because I had to replace this left hand switch assembly with a universal one and there's no mount for the choke and also there seems to be something amiss down here. The, I have to pull it by hand to start the bike so uh, there's something that's collapsed or missing or broken down there and it's just too expensive to find a replacement and especially with not having a mount up near the, the clutch lever on the left hand side I figured I would just put a, a manual enricher, you know, keep it simple. So I'm going to remove the tank and we'll remove the old uh, enricher assembly and we'll put in the new sort of universal one. I think I got it on Alibaba or Amazon. I think it was Alibaba. So the idea is that you, you just pull it out, you know, totally manual, and then you got to remember to push it back in, just like that. So uh, let's take the tank off and we'll dig in. Okay, tank's off, so you can kind of see what I'm dealing with here. This is the sort of an elbow for the enricher cable and you have to pull it out manually. The bike starts easily like that, but it's just sort of a pain in the butt. So I thought uh, we'll see if we can thread this in there and then this knob will be a bit um, a bit easier to deal with. Uh, hopefully we don't have to take the carburetor off because I know there's a plastic nut that anchors the assembly in there and uh, I, I did have it out before and hopefully I didn't over tighten it so we can just uh, unthread it without having to take the carb off. So it looks like it's a 12 millimeter uh, wrench and I think I'd left it loose enough when I had the carburetor off to just get in there. I've seen fellows also do it with um, with like uh, curved nose, needle nose pliers. Yeah, but we're gonna be okay, I think. Getting this out, yeah, good. Good for me for doing thinking ahead and doing that because that would have been a, getting the carbs off these bikes a bit of a pain in the butt. Oh, this should screw out quite easily then we'll get rid of the whole cable assembly and we'll pop in that uh, replacement piece so there we go let's compare the threads yeah look same pitch and diameter and this has got a little cover on it we'll compare the enricher valve ends they look to be the same to me so we'll fire in the new one I'm not sure if we need any Teflon tape on here I'll just thread it in I'll thread it in easily and, and, and see what happens. Let's take a look in there before we do. I'll get your light so you can see where it threads into the carburetor there. It's nice and clean. I think it looks like it just bottoms out in the hole, so I don't think we need any thread locker or uh, like Teflon tape or anything. Okay, let's give it a shot. Before I put it in there, I thought might as well have a full understanding of how this thing works. So, because um, it does have a bit of drag, but it seems to sort of be variable, and I, I don't want to have to keep a hold of it. You know, I want it to stay out, and then I have to push it back in uh, when the bike's warmed up. And that seems to be sort of adjustable with this silver nut here. You tighten it up, and, and the, the slower it pops back, but that's still too too fast, right? We want it to. Um, we want it to stay out for a while. I don't think it's meant to auto return. It's a pretty cheap thing. Uh, I think tightening this nut will will help slow its action. But let's take it apart. Pull the spring back, and then you slide the enricher nozzle sort of valve off, and then the spring comes off, and then the plunger assembly can pull right out. This it's shipped sort of finger tight. That's why I'm wondering. I don't want it to rattle loose on the bike. So let's just see what we're dealing with here. Yeah, there's an O-ring. A rubber o-ring in there and it just seats in the bottom so I think the more we tighten this nut the 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 more pressure it'll exert on that o-ring and maybe the more drag we'll have on this plunger assembly so we'll put it all back together and maybe I'll, I'll snug up 
this silver nut a bit more. Yeah. Yeah, it does increase the drag. I'll push it all the way down, fire the spring back in, and then that slides on like that. Let it go, and there we go. We're back to one piece. So I'm just going to tighten this up off camera, and then we'll put it in the bike. It's a 13 millimeter wrench on the body of this guy, so we'll thread it in now. Get the old one out of the way. We'll remove it later completely. Yeah, I don't want to over tighten anything, but we'll just thread it in there till it bottoms and then give it a little snug. Probably good enough. And we'll see if it, uh, I'm going to block your view. Pull it out. Push it in, pull it out, push it in. It doesn't go all the way in, but uh, perhaps it's seated in its bore. Or So, okay, let's uh, try and start the bike. Okay, first with the choke off. It may start. I have run it recently. No, okay. So we'll give it... Uh, Also, I should probably plug the vacuum hose to the petcock, eh? We'll give it some choke, and then I'll pull, I'll plug the, the petcock line. Okay, there we go. It is kind of creeping back in on its own. I don't know if you can see that. I don't know if that's a feature or not. Let it run for a second, and then we'll see if we can get it to run off of choke. All right, that seems to do the job. And then I can strip it of the old uh, assembly, the old cable and stuff, keep it simple. So anyway, I hope you found it useful. Maybe I'll put the link to the, uh, to the part that I found here uh, below. I think it was Alibaba. I think I said that already too. Anyway, I'll put the link down there. Hope you found this useful. Um, thanks for watching and uh, stay safe out there.